Hello, welcome to um, to our little webinar. Uh, again, this is a, a ever-changing format that we're trying to do. Um, now that we can be in the lab in person, so we're trying to sort of like spread some of our knowledge. Now that we are, uh, now that we are home, um, so we're in my home lab today, and uh, I'm going to talk about the ESP32 and uh, cameras. And there's a couple of reasons why we do this. Um, first of all, the, one of the motivations is that recently we've been doing some projects where we needed a computer vision application that was like small and lightweight. And uh, uh, since the ESP32 has a natural ability to, to connect to small cameras, we were to sort of try that out. Uh, doing computer vision and camera things on a small embedded system has been kind of difficult in the past. Uh, one of the reasons for that is like usually if you have a small microcontroller, you, uh, you also have a very like, small amount of memory and usually not a very fast processor. So uh, you, you would often end up in a situation where you are able to connect a camera of some sort, you're able to access the camera, get data out, but you have nowhere to store it and nowhere to, to, to have a, a place to process it. And obviously there's been embedded systems where, uh, like the Raspberry Pi, where, where you have a huge system, lots of memory, uh, but it's also a very sort of high overhead system. So what is new and exciting, as far as we're concerned, is like uh, that you can now buy like a tiny microcontroller that is like, 50 crowns, I don't know how much that is in, in dollars. <laughs> I don't know. 50, it's about yeah. $10. $10, something like we that. We have a little camera problem, as I can see. Okay. So, exciting times. We have a $5 microcontroller. It has a peripheral that's able to connect to a camera. It does have enough memory, but it's still very simple can be programmed with Arduino. It's able to run like a simple application. So um, chances are, if you're interested in this, uh, you might have gone online and bought something like this. This is like a small uh, ESP32 with a small uh, camera module connected to it. Everything is already pre-wired. Uh, you might also have gotten something like this, which is just the camera module with the connections on it, connected to a microcontroller. These comes in all sorts of sizes. I will get back to these later on. But um, but uh, I would like to like uh, tonight. I would like to talk to about a few things. Uh, first of all, I would like to talk about the camera module. What kind of thing is it? Uh, I would like to talk a little bit about how it it connects to the ESP microcontroller. And then I would like to talk about how you actually get it to run and so on. I'm, chances are that a lot of people have bought these. There's one example that actually comes with Arduino, the ESP32 extensions for Arduino. And it sets up a little web server that you see the picture from the camera, let you uh, adjust different parameters. But actually getting from that application into something useful is kind of a steep learning curve. And um, that's why one of the things we would like to uh, address today. So, um, I would like to explain how uh, how the camera works. I'm just gonna move down here for a sec. There we go. I hope you can all see it. I see. Just let me know. The camera module that is on an ESP32, we just get one of uh, 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 these ESP cams are uh, this little, uh, I believe it's called OV2670 something. Um, just have it. I'm sorry, my computer had a little bit of fit. So all the wonderful windows I have open with data sheets and stuff for you. Uh, has gone. It's a OV2640. Uh, camera module. There's also a, diff a, a couple of other cameras that are compatible with 
USB. Så jeg er nødt til at spørge om noget, ja. selvom vi er midt i det. Ja. Øh, har du noget USB-C power? Ja. <laughs> ja. Og mens jeg finder noget USB-C power, så synger sang, øh, Jacques en lille pausesang. Pausesang? All right. There's there's a couple of camera modules that is uh, compatible with the uh, uh, with the uh, with the ESP cams. And one of them is uh, the OV2640, which is a I believe a two megapixel camera. Uh, a lot of these camera modules uh, has a common functionality. Some of them has a little bit of a different resolution, but they all basically consist of a camera. Uh, image sensor uh, as some sort of image processing and then and sort of fairly high speed uh, high bandwidth parallel interface that is able to take the images of the the, the image sensor and send it off to something uh, and then it has an an additional control interface next to it and the reason why I'm explaining this is that it makes it a lot more easy to understand than Uh, the application examples that we're going to look at later, but there's a uh, additional control interface that sets up how wh what resolution the camera is running, the timing of the camera, the all, all the image setting, brightness, auto gain, all that stuff, and that runs on a completely different interface, which is essentially a I square C interface, but it in this context it's called a SCCB. Serial camera control bus, I believe it's called. Uh, at the end of the day, it's like an I square C interface, but I guess for licensing and compatibility reasons, it's it's called the SSCB. So the way you would use a camera like this, if you imagine that the that this speech, the image sensor, the sort of image processor and memory system that will hold the image and 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 work with the image, and the control system that controls the exposure and all that stuff is inside the camera module. And the way you would use something like this, you would connect it up to a microcontroller, and it would have some kind of high-speed interface that would be able to take the image off the image sensor, and some kind of like low little maintenance interface that will basically control the camera. So uh, that's how these cameras works. Uh, lots of different kinds of them, but usually when you buy these uh, little small camera modules, it would be something like the OV2640. Uh, Um, I would like to show an example of how to connect this up to an Arduino board. Obviously, we don't have to do all the connections ourselves. You can buy breakout boards like this, which basically just converts the very difficult to work with connections from the camera module into some more sort of easy to use uh, pin configuration. There's also modules like this where it's where the camera and the module is, is, is kind of built together. And it is possible to take these modules and just connect them with a whole bunch of wires like this uh, to your ESP32 connect, uh, ESP32 uh, board of choice. And then, yeah, basically make your own camera. But the reason, the, the, the point of buying something like this, which is a board that every, where everything is, is, is connected in one unit is very uh, convenient because you don't have to like, to any connections. I just gonna want to show a couple of, uh, of different versions. This one is the classic ESP32 cam version. It does have a, it does have a um, SD card connection, which is basically also just the pins of the SD card is connected to the ESP processor. The pins of the camera is connected to the ESP processor. And it's a little bit of a, a jungle to figure out how these things are actually connected, but I'll get back to those later. This is a different version, uh, slightly newer version, same camera, same ESP32 uh, processor. Uh, this one is using a discrete processor, which means it's just a chip on there and it comes with a little heat sink because this thing apparently gets hot. Uh, this one has a fancy USB-C connector on it. Um, that's very convenient because most of these boards does not have a USB connector on it. So you essentially need to build your own your own carrier for it this is an example of like how you would um, how, how you connect something like this uh, in this case i have taken a 
uh, USB to like TTL converter. This is an old ESP board where I've stripped the processor off and connected to RS and TX on this, this module. And you're using the normal serial bootloader to get code on this thing, but it doesn't actually have a USB plug for powering or programming this. So that's a little bit inconvenient. So these ones, if you just want the, to work with the image, is a little more convenient. But it does not come with an SD card connector, which means that you have no way of storing images if you wanted to. Also, it doesn't come with I.O. pins, so you can't connect one yourself. So it's a trade-off, one or the other. I'm sure that in the near future, there will be different projects that will come up that will kind of address that. But, um, but essentially, uh, what I'll be working with today is, uh, is the newer USB-C version of the camera. This is, this is what I'm going to be using uh, for the examples. And uh, the only difference between these two is that the camera, uh, the camera connections, the pins that connects the camera and the ESP processes, it's slightly different. And that's all software configurable. So you just basically need, when you buy one of these, you need to know which pins to connect to or by which pins the manufacturer used. And that's a little bit difficult to get, but with a with a ample amount of googling, you you are able to figure out which is which. the 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 one we're using today is called M five M five Cam, I think, and uh, slightly more expensive the other one. I'm going to um, to show a, a, a software example how you get it up and running when you open the example that comes with the with the, the ESP32 extension for, for Arduino. The, the example is super complicated. It has mm, a lot of stuff going on. So uh, to make things a little bit easier, I have stripped it down to the absolute bare minimum uh, of what will require to get one of these cameras up and running. And the, the goal here is to actually get image data from the sensor into Arduino being able to work with it in some kind of way and then uh, store or retransmit or whatever you want. But getting actual pixel data into your sketch in Arduino and being able to work with it. So I hope everybody can see my screen. Uh, for simplicity, I have hidden some of the code away that is not relevant for this uh, explanation. The first we have is I've made a separate tab which will get this uh, device on the internet. Uh, I have uh, I have a separate tab that explains the connection. These are manufacturer specific for each different cameras. So um, so we need to fill those out once we have like figured out how the camera is actually connected, unless we've done it ourselves. And um, add out a few things. So so this sketch. We'll see here, and we'll uh, we'll share this sketch later on after the webinar, so you can have a go at it yourself. Basically, what happens is that uh, we set up a serial connection. We're just using that so to to see if everything goes right, and so on. It's like a debugging interface. We are uh, doing some code that will bring us on the internet. I'm not going to go into detail with that, but we're used to working, and there's tons and tons of examples of like how to connect the ESP32 to Wi-Fi and do stuff. So I'm not going to go into more details with that. And then we have sort of the business end. This is this is how we, uh, we get to work with the camera. I just want to say one thing. This uh, include that I have here ESP camera.h. That is a file that is supply or sort of a subsystem that is supplied with Arduino. So it's not something you have to install as, as soon as you install the, the ESP32 extension for your Arduino, this will be available. And uh, we are only using stuff that is already present and available in Arduino. So we're not installing any libraries or doing anything fancy. Uh, Cork, there's a qu uh, quick question yes. uh, about the board. Is there a GPS on these boards? Uh, yes. This traditional ESP32 cam has a... a, a, a a selection of uh, of I/O pins. Uh, I don't exactly remember what they are, but they're, they're, there's like a good selection of I/O pins. Uh, some of the the normal I/O pins you get on your board is is used up by your uh, by the SD card, and some is used up by the camera, and those are not 
all broken out uh, on the board. But you can stick this in a breadboard and work with it. And, and GPS? GPS, no GPS. No GPS? No, you can attach a GPS receiver easily. Okay. If you want to. Okay. So. Anyway, so back to this. We're not installing any... Uh, uh, we are not installing any uh, libraries or extension for this demo, so basically just that file. So apart from setting up the serial port and getting online and so on, uh, we need to fill out a structure that is basically telling the subsystem how our camera is connected. Uh, it's called an camera underscore config underscore T. That is something that is defined in that, uh, that file I, I talked about earlier. And we're making an instance, uh, instance of it called config. We could call this anything, but this is just for the example. So we basically declare this thing. And inside, there's a whole bunch of parameters we can set up. And these are basically what is needed to connect this camera. Uh, a thing that I kind of forgot to mention before was that the image chip uh, does require a high frequency clock to run. Uh, some of these modules supply these, uh, this clock with a uh, built-in oscillator, but most of the cameras use a, a different subsystem on the ESP32 to generate kind of the, the, the clock signal uh, that needs to get this camera going. And uh, this system is called the LED driver or something. Basically, these first two lines here of the code just tell... Um, tell the, the program that uh, wh which pin will be supplying the clock output from the ESP32 into the, uh, to the camera module. So basically what happens here is on these two pins, uh, oh, on this, this, uh, this substance will out output a 20 megahertz output signal. You could just as well have put a crystal or something, an external generator on. But just for convenience, uh, we are we're, we're able to make this on the on the ESP32, so we don't have to have an external clock or something. Then the way that the data is communicated between the camera and the ESP is eight bit parallel. So we have a section here, and I'll get back to what these things means in a minute. But basically, we need to supply like each of the, the data pins, which pin on the ESP32 is that connected to. Uh, and that goes for the, the data pins. It goes from a uh, two clock signal called uh, X clock and P clock, which is basically when does the line start, when does the whole image start, stuff like that. It's not something where we really need to go into the details. I'm just saying that these are the, the pin connections you need to figure out from the window of view. So there's the X clock, P clock, V sync, and the H ref. These are signal coming from the camera to the ESP32. Then there's another two connections, which is the SIOD and SIOC, which is basically these communication lines that that allows you to communicate with the with the brain of the camera, set the resolution, change uh, brightness, all that stuff, and they run on on those two extra lines on the set. So, uh, and then there's a power down. It is convenient if you're running one of these cameras on off the off a battery, for instance. It's convenient for you to be able to shut it down because they do usually t uh, consume a lot of power, so you're able to do that. And sometimes you're able to sometimes you want to reset it if you lose communication with the camera and stuff like that. Not everybody uses this uh, these uh, capabilities, but I'll get back to that later. There's a clock frequency that you have to configure. This I've tried to change this to other values, but that doesn't work. Everything just crashed. So I very strongly suggest uh, leaving this as it is. Um, most of these cameras, at least supplied by this framework, is able to work in five different camera modes. And these are all relating to how the pixel information from the image is transmitted. Um, the first one that is in this list, you can see that I have uh, uncommented three of them and I'm using a fourth. So basically these four lines here uh, explains different opportunities you have to, to choose the, the video format. You can choose JPEG, which is really, really 
interesting. The camera chip itself actually compresses the image and uh, you get a already compressed JPEG image. Uh, that's very, very convenient if you want to um, if you want to send this to a web page, for instance, or if you want to store it on an SD card for viewing later, if you want to take pictures, then it's, it's, it's very convenient. It can also be used for streaming, but it's not very efficient. Then there's a couple of uh, uh, formats where you can send the, the, the image in different resolution. You can use this RGB 565, which means that it's using fewer bytes to actually hold the data. And then there's a 8888, which means there's like one full 8-bit value for each pixel. And then there's the grayscale format, which is basically just 8-bit, like 0 to uh, 255 for each pixel. And that's the one we've been using today. And the reason why we're using this little, a little bit boring format and just getting everything in grayscale is because whenever you want to transmit this image somewhere, it's a lot of data. So we've just scaled it down. The camera does uh 24-bit um, color images but for today we're just using grayscale because it's it's easier for the demonstration we're doing so just keep in mind that the camera is able to supply data in all sorts of format but we're using the cheapest one today because for for convenience so basically all these values goes into this config uh entity that we declared up here so it's basically in our Arduino sketch, setting up what everything should be. And then we sent this config that we just filled up to the function ESP camera in it, which is also supplied by that subsystem that is already in there. So that's basically all we have to do to get the camera starting started. Declare this guy, fill out all these uh, numbers, call this function. Hopefully if everything goes well, the camera is now connected to the ESP and is able to like supply uh, pixel data. So that's the first hurdle. Um, I can say if you if take the example for this camera, uh, you need to dig very deep down to find this functionality. And um, I guess most of us is really interested in starting here. So that's that's basically all you need. After that has happened, if, if everything goes well, you can if you want to. Uh, used, you use the, the, the information that's supplied back to actually ask the camera some questions. What is your resolution? What kind of model are you? And stuff like that. So uh, in this little example, I've done that and we will see the output from that later on. Basically, we get a number back. We compare to a couple of different options and then we will just tell us, oh, this is a model, this and that. So after that, this is just something convenient. This is not something we have to do. So now we're at this point where we say, okay, it's fine. We have connected the camera. We have, uh, we have uh, initialized the camera. So now it's actually ready to apply pixels. So how do we actually do this? How do we get the information into our sketch and start using it? Um, before I get into that detail, I just want to say that I have, uh, for the de demonstration, uh, made a small program in processing I hope most of you are uh, familiar with processing. Processing is basically the same as Arduino, but for desktop computers where you can in, in very simple, uh, simple ways um, make a disk program for your desktop computer. I'm just gonna uh, sh quickly show you this program. Basically what it does is I am making a connection on my ES2, ESP32. Uh, I'm making a tiny little server. And with this program that I'm going to show you now, I connect to the ESP, get the raw information. It's basically just a way to get some, some pixels from the ESP onto my screen. So I'm not gonna go into a lot of details with it, but what happens is like a tiny server on the ESP supplies the pixels that get displayed on a, on a screen. And uh, I will just, quickly show this program if I can find all my stuff so. yes. very simple program sets up a net connection sets up a little window on the screen 
get the the raw data from the from an image screen and and show it on the screen. It's 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 basically twenty lines of code, and I will supply this with the examples later on. So just um, just uh, for reference, this is a way where we can see whatever data we got. I'm just gonna go back to the Arduino and uh, and we'll have a look at how we actually access the data from the pixels. In the main loop, we basically ask, and this is for the demonstration only. So this is the, we, we, has this slow program that I just explained, has it been connected to us? If we are connected, we, uh, we use the function ESP camera FP get. It spits out uh, one of these guys, an FB, which is a, a little collection of information about uh, about the, the, the information that we have read from the camera. It has two interesting things inside it. It has like an FP error buff, which is an array of pixel from the camera. It has an FB length, which is an integer value, how many pixels did we get? So basically what happens here is like, by calling the ESP uh, camera FB get, we get a, a, a screen, uh, we get a, 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 a picture, and we can use these two values to, to read out the pixel data. In this case, we're just sending this one onto the viewer screen. And, um, and once we're done with this, once we have used the pixel for something useful, we are sending this FB entity that we got in the beginning, uh, we are sending that back to the camera driver to free up the memory for use for other things. So every time we want to take a picture, we do this line, this top line here to, to uh, to get the image, we do something. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's not very good. Uh, is this better? <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> so that's just to reiterate, to take an image, we, uh, we use this uh, function, ESP camera, if we get. Uh, the, in the information about what the picture we took goes into this FB structure. Uh, we can use the FB buff, FB length, to, to get the actual pixels and the length of it. And once we're done, we do we have to supply it back to the camera driver to free up and, and, um, and use the memory. So there's not a lot of stuff going on here. If I, um, I believe that I already have this program running. So I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna switch to the, uh, to the viewfinder. And, uh, and we can have a quick look at the, the image actually coming off the data here. So, I don't know if we can get the camera to film itself. We have a, a very shaky black and white image from, um, from the image sensor. Basically raw data collected out from the, from, the, from the image sensor, directly sent to a little program that just uh, sends the, pictures, uh, the pixels to the screen. And, and that's the simplest application you can use this camera if I just use it as like a sort of a webcam. And that's all good and fine. Uh, I hope that sort of demonstrate how you um, how you get the 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 image out of the of the, uh, of the camera sensor. But if you want to actually use in your application in your um, uh, Arduino application, if you want to use it something, I'm just gonna go and iterate a little bit more for how you can actually. Um, how you can actually augment the, the, the image or do something with it or, or read the image out and do some analysis on it. And for that, I'm just going to, there we go. Interesting. There we go. Um, 
now that we actually have the now, now that we have the info the 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 image inside Arduino, we might want to use something use it for something. So uh, I have uh, used uh, a library from Adafruit, Adaf Adafruit Graphics Library, which is super convenient when doing something like this. Let's say we want to write something on top of the image. We want uh, some kind of information to be augmented on top of the image from before, rather than just sending it somewhere. So what we can do is that we can use the Adafruit Graphics Library. Am I still on mute here? That code? Good, okay. Uh, basically, we have to supply two things for this library. Uh, uh, the library is able to write text, draw lines, draw circles, do all kinds of graphic entities. And the only thing that you have to supply is the ability to set one dot on the screen somewhere or read one dot off the screen. That's the only thing you have to supply as a user and the uh, library will do the rest for you. So that's a very convenient way to, to, uh, to get text and graphic into memory on a microcontroller or something. So I'm not gonna go into a huge detail, but basically I have, uh, I have uh, extended the Adafruit graphics library entity with a couple of function. One that's called draw pixel. Basically, if I have a piece of memory inside my Arduino, I am now able via this, uh, this uh, function to put a pixel on it in, the, in that memory. There's a get function, which basically do, do the opposite. If you have an image somewhere in memory, it's able to read one pixel and give it back to you. Uh, these are the sort of very low, lowest uh, level of, uh, of functions you should supply. I have also supplied a, a function called set buffer, which is able to, where you basically supply an image in memory, and then all the functionality will use that as a drawing background if you want to. So uh, without going into any further detail, this is the definition of how this thing will work. Uh, this is called a frame buffer. I've called this thing that I just described a frame buffer. I'm here making an instance of it with the resolution that I expect my camera to be. So basically I have somewhere in my memory, which is an image of 320 by 240 pixels, called OSD where I can do text and graphic and lines on it. And the way I use this is this is the same example as before. I get online, so I'm able to show the, the pictures. I fill out the information about how the camera works. I initialize the, uh, the image. And now that every time I, I take a picture, instead of just like before where I send it to the screen and look at it, I am able to do all kinds of things on it. So for instance, um, I'm starting by using, uh, telling my, my uh, subsystem that I would like to use the camera image that I just got out of the camera to write on. And then just as uh, lots and lots of Arduino projects that uses this library, I'm able to issue commands like set text size, put the cursor somewhere on the screen, print something. And uh, once I've done all these things, I'm then able to send the picture onto uh, onto my application. This is of course like really the very simplest thing. Take a picture, write something on top of it. Um, and you can just run this one and uh, we can have a look at the result. It's not very surprising what's going to happen then. All of these uh, examples that I've just given now is just working on grayscale. Most application where you use a, a tiny compact system to, to do simple uh, computer vision is always you do often don't need color information. So, so just uh, just black and white would do well for some uh, for most applications. But if you do need color, if you need like to recognize color, if you do need to do color tracking and stuff like that, it's convenient to uh, to extend to um, to use the color. I'm just doing it because it's I'm just using grayscale because it's simple. Um, we'll have a look at the result. 
if I can find it. There's a lot going on here. Okay. Not the We're still uploading. <laughs> the um, I guess streaming four different things on your computer does take a little <laughs> bit of <laughs> We need to have elevator music. <laughs> yeah. Or bring that for next time. Yeah. I have now um, I have now uh, run the second uh, second example. I want to show the output, so you can see what the program outputs. It gets an IP number for my viewer, and it has found an OV to the six forty sensor. This is just an information for me. And um, if I run my little viewfinder. This is why I need a producer shock. Yep. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so now I have a, a live camera feed from my uh, from my application with the with the some graphic in this case some text augmentation on top of it. And obviously I can use this. Uh, uh, I can also read the information of the uh, the image, do something with it. And um, the last example I want to show. Is um, is taking taking the um, the pixels or the information on the screen and actually using it for something useful, and that will require me to. I don't know. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go in details with the example, but basically what it it's doing is it's looking at all the pictures on the screen, just iterating through all the 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 pixels. It's uh, then deciding which pixels are beyond a certain brightness. And it basically calculates a centroid, uh, a mass centrum of all those pixels. So it can be thought of as sort of a, a light tracker. It, it basically um, finds not the brightest spot on the screen, but sort of like the center of gravity of most brightness on the screen. So, um, We'll just have a look at it in a minute. And uh, that's the last example. So, so we have now covered how to, uh, how to get the camera to, uh, to take a pic, how to connect the camera, how to initialize the camera, how to get information into the, uh, your Arduino program, how to, if you want to, uh, manipulate it by writing something on top of it. We'll see a, very shortly see an example of, uh, of using the pixel information to something useful. In this case, uh, tracking uh, something uh, something bright on the screen. And uh, then I would like to uh, just cover how to figure out the connections, how to um, to figure out what, what system you uh, what the system you're using and and how the pins are are connected. And uh, then I will be happy to take some questions if anyone is uh, is interested. I will now just show the the last example. Um, what we are doing is we are I'll just. Uh, there we go. So basically, the camera is just looking into the ceiling. It's trying to figure out what is the brightest uh, brightest point in the screen. It's found something. If I shine a flashlight into the ceiling, it can sort of move that around, and and I get a a, a pretty good tracking of of uh, where the information is. So this is a tiny little Arduino sketch, like less than a hundred lines of code, takes the camera information in and kind of tracks something and do something useful with it.
to an augmentation on the screen. So uh, I, f I think that demonstrates that you can you can make lightweight, simple uh, computer vision applications with the system. Yeah? Um, any questions so far? No, no questions. That's pretty good. Um, Are you also going to show the people tracking? No. No. Okay. <laughs> That's too advanced. Well, I mean, I'm I'm trying to keep it very basic here, but the, yeah. I, I mean, we have used some. Uh, made some fairly advanced applications with it. Now, um, the OV2640 processor um, does take two megapixel images in 24-bit, as far as I know. Uh, it doesn't do it very fast. Uh, I think it can do like maybe four frames a second in that high resolution. Obviously, as you sh uh, shrink the resolution down, you get higher frame rate. Uh, I would say that a um, a two megapixel image, Chuck, is that 1200 something by? Yeah, basically. I can't yeah. remember these pixels. It's so the, the, the camera configurations goes from the, uh, I think it's called. You could get other uh, kinds of cap uh, cameras. I would say that uh, with the amount of memory you have on an ESP32 and the uh, this this speed of the interface, I would say th this ca this camera is sort of like the limiting factor. I don't think it would be possible. You can probably connect higher resolution cameras using this uh, this way, but you will. You will not be able to process the image on board because it doesn't have enough memory. You can store it on an SD card and you use it as a camera, which which is um, which is certainly possible. You can have like a, if you're using it a, as an astronomical camera or something, you will be able to to store the information. But for actual image processing in this category, I would say this is probably the limiting factor for 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 this system. Um, I, I'm planning to use it for. For instance, astronomical tracking or reading of gauges or uh, um, tracking of people, um, stuff like that. Very simple, lightweight uh, information. Two megapixel is, is actually full HD. Okay, so we can do like four, four frames per second if in full uh, HD. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you have somewhere to store the image. <laughs> I'll just go back uh, uh, and just show um, how you define how your camera is connected. And I am in this uh, in this demo. I have, I have two different uh, possible connection. Most cameras fall within these categories. So most ESP cameras you would buy off eBay will work with one of these two connections. I'm just going to find one of these examples. Uh, this one, for instance. Okay. So um, up here in the beginning, we have all these connections. Um, basically, this first bit here is is uh, the name of the signal. This second here is just the name of the definition. And I have, um, many of the implementations and many of the examples that comes with these cameras store these in some way. So either in the top of the, uh, in top of your program, you select, oh, I'm using an ESP32 cam from this uh, company or something, and then they will try and fill these in for you with a whole bunch of definition. But for sake of uh, simplicity, uh, I have just make this list of definition. So basically, uh, the power down pin. I have defined that to minus one. That means I'm not using the power down pin. Uh, you can do the same thing with the reset pin. If you put minus one in here, then it doesn't do reset. Um, I'm not entirely sure how it works underneath. Uh, all the other signals needs to be defined somehow, or you need to supply these to, to the camera subsystem. So, so basically, pin numbers, these are GPIO numbers, and you will be able 
to find your whatever product you're using or if you're doing this yourself. Uh, find a schematic, figure out which pin on the camera is connected to these. Um, these names here that is used, they are the same on all the camera modules. So it doesn't really matter which camera module, they will all have these X clock, SIOD, SIOC, reset, uh, Y something pins, the SIG pin, all these pins will, will correspond to actual pins on the camera and they're all called the same. So all you have to supply is basically which electrical connection uh, is on your particular board. So I just want to show how I did this. This is for the um, M5 cam that we're using in these examples. Uh, the USB-C one up here. It's the same names, different pins, which is the classic ESP32 cam that is $5. Is, is that information readily available somewhere or do I have to figure it out for yourself? Well, <laughs> that's different. You can you can troll you can troll around on the internet and sometimes you can find something. It's it's not it's not straightforward to find. Okay. <laughs> the vendors sometimes have it on their wiki page and something. And what you usually do is you buy something that you like, and then you will sort of like screw around with it until it works. Or you can also use a multimeter, <laughs> basically find the connection, and then. But th that is like one of the things where you have to spend a little bit that's of energy. Annoying. Yeah, but that's just uh, how it is. <laughs> There's a question on uh, on YouTube here. Yeah. It's uh, Daniel who asked, can we do stuff like DJI drone stuff? You know, like uh, uh, capture uh, takeoff and looking for landing match, auto landing stuff. Could you actually build something like that for your cheap drone? You could. Uh, the only thing is like, it is going to be a low resolution and it's going to be slow speed. Uh, I'm pretty uh, sure. I'm pretty sure that the, some of the sensors on the DJI drone is pretty low resolution. But it probably has a faster, uh, faster yeah. processor. So yeah. it's all a speed resolution trade off. Yes, you could definitely do something like that. I have uh, experimented with using it for for tracking things, and as long as you are either far away, so things doesn't move very quickly, or or you don't have to move very fast then it's definitely possible to do something like that. I am I am in imagining using something like this for small robots, like yeah. line following robots that will be able to sort of like crawl around and follow things on, on the floor or follow color tags or something like yeah, that. So you could also do, that was my question, is that could you also do like color tracking? I'd like mean if you had red tape or green tape. Yes. And definitely color tracking is very good for this. The only reason we don't do color today is that you know, then I don't have to transfer so much information. So mm. basically, small amount of information. So um, color tracking, the frame rate drops. Exactly. No, not necessarily. Only if you want to see the picture. You can, you can, you can have the, you can have the. Um, uh, you can have the. Hang on a sec. does not want to see my pretty face anymore. <laughs> hmm. uh, you can have um, just the tracking information relayed somewhere. For instance, you can do a whole bunch of image processing inside the processes, which is really fast. Hmm. And then you can just send the result off somewhere via, via the serial port or uh, servos or something. Uh, you don't actually have to see the picture. It's just you know, for lining the camera up and seeing what the robots see and, and for understanding what information comes into the camera, you need some kind of way to see mm, the image. But course. for most application, it could just go on in memory and you don't actually have to do that. So also stuff like uh, fiducial tracking, mm. uh, face recognition, that, there are libraries that does face, face recognition. These uh, OpenCV, as far as I know, is ported for this and stuff like that. But But at the end of the day, Image sensor, bunch of pixels you can do stuff with. Mm. Go play. Yeah, that is cool. the, the the point of the demonstration in this thing. And the the, the usually the price for an ESP cam and the standard version is about like fifty kron or something like forty five yeah. kron. Five dollars. Yeah. Five dollars. These are absolutely dirt cheap. So they're a lot, lot cheaper than a uh, Raspberry Pi with a mm. camera on it. They are a lot easier to use. Saying if you try like a like an old school Arduino mm. Uno with one of these cameras on it, you can 
get a little bit of pixel information in, but you can't really do anything. It does not have memory. It does not have enough speed. So the ESP32 process is right in the sweet spot where you can do a little bit. It's super cheap. It's super lightweight. It doesn't use a ton of power. And the and processor is actually powerful enough to do something with it. Yeah, it's powerful enough that you can actually do something with image information. Mm. You can't do like HD, high speed, anything, but it's still totally useful for a lot of small uh, applications. So. so I hope uh, this has uh, clarified some of the stuff you have to go through to use this for something. And I, I really hope to see a lot of interesting projects in the future. Um, if there are any more questions, if there are not any more questions, then I will hey, conclude for one today. One thing, are you going to yeah. uh, do a small, uh, small tutorial kind of thing on our webpage where you can download the examples? Yes, the examples so will be available. We'll put a link to the examples, uh, just how to get the camera started. Uh, there are also other projects uh, uh, with other people doing uh, similar stuff and um, also on YouTube. So I can link to some of those as well. They're very good. We're That's very good that. information. So uh, I think that concludes us what I had to say, what I wanted to say. Cool. And uh, I hope you all got a little bit more informed. Perfect. Thank man. you. <laughs> yeah, if we ever get back to the lab. <laughs> okay. Goodbye.